Now get on to the telephone lines and speak with a former commissioner of uh, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, uh, Justice Francis Emil Short. He joins us now. Good evening, sir, and thank you extremely for your time. Uh, good evening, and thank you for inviting me to speak to you. Mm. Now, President Mahama on Saturday said the NDC, is his party in government, will make corruption a high-risk activity in his second term. So, how will you assess the fight against corruption in his first term? Well, I think a lot more could have been done. Uh, for example, um, I haven't heard any action being taken regarding the Auditor General's um, yearly reports to the Public Accounts Committee in which mm. he lists so many financial irregularities in a lot of the you know, MMDs uh, and um, the, the President promised that those responsible had accountable. Um, we haven't had any action being taken in, in that regard. And then secondly, there are very important pieces of legislation which by now should have been passed. The Freedom of Information Bill, for example, so far as I'm aware, is still in Parliament. It hasn't been passed. Um, the Conduct of Public Officers Bill 2013, which deals with conflict of interest as well as gifts, mm. uh, is still with Parliament. It hasn't been passed. And then, you know, we still don't have an effective access declaration legal regime mm. which would make the declarations uh, public and also um, some 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 individual mm. or institution. I can imagine now um, um, you made mention of the uh, the conduct of public officers bill 2013 which has been before Parliament for quite some time now on the basis of that will you say Parliament itself has shown very little interest in uh, executing uh, the fight against corruption well, I think so, because, um, first of all, the government has a majority in Parliament, and I think if there is a, a commitment to push this bill, you know, um, it could have been done. But, you know, not only that, but, you know, you have also the, the, the need to pass legislation to, to, to incorporate the broader definition of corruption contained in the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, as well as the African Convention in Combating Corruption, which goes beyond bribery, but includes things like just enrichment, insider trading, and so on. Um, that also has not been done. And so these are very important pieces of anti-corruption legislation which are still hanging in the balance. And if you want to fight corruption at the top, in other words, grand corruption, for example, you must have an, a, you know, an effective access declaration law yeah. which would enable you know, the public and um, anti-corruption institutions to hold public officials accountable. So I think that in, in that respect, there hasn't been sufficient mm. you know, movement, especially in Parliament, to pass these, uh, these pieces of legislation. And these pieces of legislation are activities which should have, which are included in the short-term activities in the National Anti-Corruption Plan. So I think that um, not enough have, has been done not in, in those mm. areas. Right. And, uh, well, um, when we look at the uh, various Auditor General's reports, uh, they there have always been cases of public servants embezzling money and all of that and yet many go unpunished how is this situation uh encouraging corruption in the public service well of course i mean it's not going to it's only going to promote impunity if people are not held accountable year in year out the auditor general submits his report to, to the public accounts committee and we hear uh, about how uh, you know public officials are involved in corruption, embezzlement, violation of the procurement law, and so on, and um, we, we still don't see any action being taken. And it's not going to act as a deterrent if you know 
to continue like this. So I, I think that some action has to be taken. The president some time ago said that yeah, the attorney general will take action, you know, on these uh, auditor general's recommendations. Right. But mm. we still have not seen anything being done, you know, in that regard. Um, I don't think there has been enough public awareness about the cost and the evil of corruption. I think there are a lot more needs to could have been done, you know, um, uh, in order to make the, the fight against corruption a lot more effective. Mm. Right. Uh, when we when we take a look at the Freedom of Information Bill, for example, it has been before Parliament for over a decade, and the NDC is promising to pass it if it wins a December poll and gets a second term. But shouldn't this have been giving priority in the first term and that bill passed into law? Well, it should have been long, long, long ago. As you indicated, it's been in Parliament for over a decade. You know, and this is a very important piece of legislation which would, you know, promote transparency and accountability in the fight against corruption, you know. And um, I, I, I just can't understand why it is still before Parliament and, um, you know, there has been no commitment to pass this very important piece of legislation. Uh, in addition to, to other, you know, anti-corruption legislation which uh, are still hanging in the balance, uh, particularly, as I mentioned, the, the Conduct of Public Officers Bill, which deals with conflicts of interest as well as gifts, a very controversial, mm. you know, area right. in the fight against corruption. You know, all these uh, pieces of legislation, I think, are extremely important in the fight against corruption. And one would have hoped that, you know, they would have been, you know, enacted and passed by now. Right, uh, Justice Emil Shaw, we're grateful for your time.